Now Bobby Hamilton made that pit stop, but Dick, did that cure his ills? Well, probably not, Mike Joy. They think they have a broken sway bar arm on that car. They're not really sure what it is. I just sent a note to Jimmy Elledge. It is so incredibly loud where they are. They are right at the exit to the corner. It is a very, very difficult place to hear. And he just wrote back, may have a broken sway bar arm. Oh, we got trouble. Oh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the front stretch. Caution. Lap 146. Dale Earnhardt Jr. pounds the wall coming out of turn four. And getting a lap back uh, earlier, Matt Kenseth had passed the leader. He gets a lap back, and it's a save for Kyle Petty and Robbie Gordon, who were falling into the clutches of race leader Ward Burton. He was right on them when that caution came out. See some damage on the back of Schrader's car, too. I don't know if that was from checking up. Oh, he just gets, he just spins coming off that corner. It, 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 I tell you, that is easy to do, Dick. Right now, he's trapped behind Matt Kenseth that's still one lap down. He has a good race car, just trying to get back up there, hopefully catch a caution and get back on the league lap after all those problems before we restarted this race today. A lot of determination on his part. You know, it'd been easy to throw your hands up and say, man, we're three laps down here to whatever it was from the get-go. But he's driving the wheels off of it, trying to get back in the race. Well, you look at Jimmy Spencer in the 41 car. That's his Martinsville car. When we were at Martinsville about a month ago, he was three laps down, made two of those three laps up. A little easier to do sometimes on a short track. Well, and the other thing, Larry, is when you're a lap down, you go all the way to the front of the line. It's like starting on the pole. So uh, that helps you get those laps back. But then when you get them back, you got to restart in 40th place, and that makes a big difference. A big knot here, including our point leader, Sterling Marlin. And Dale Jarrett, the 88, who led earlier. Yeah, that 02 car, Hermie, is uh, kind of holding these cats up. And ooh, three he, wide. He is in harm's way, I got to tell you. <laughs> and that's harm in that 48 car. <laughs> is he going to try it again, three wide in the back? No. Wisely. Boy, Dale Jarrett, ooh. 88 car, he drove that thing in there. Th oh, and he gets into John Andretti, and he hit the outside wall. And there goes Bobby oh, Labonte. Man. And Hut Strickland misses Just gets it. By. Wow. That all started because Jarrett, here comes the 17 car, going to get a lap back, but that all started because he's not going to get it back. No, because no, Ricky no. Rudd's the leader, 28's the leader. Yeah, Rudd was just way out front of him. But nope. that all started because Dale Jarrett overdrove the interest yeah, in turn got three, up high. trying to get back into the groove. He got into John Andretti and Bobby Labonte in 18, had nowhere to go. Yep. There's just no, coming off of turn four here, there's just not enough grip up high. You get out of that preferred line. Jarrett's moving around in his car okay, but it is stuck in the mud, literally, from last night's rains. Bobby Labonte going to have a little extra rear spoiler there to work with. See what the replay shows us, but basically what happened. See Dale Jarrett way up high here. Now he picks up a lot of stuff on his tires. He's trying to get down. Bobby Labonte, he spins around because he sees Dale coming down the racetrack. Hutch Strickland sneaking by there. And uh, John Andretti became the bank shot as Jarrett came back down the racetrack. See, he picks up all kind of debris on his tires. Tony Stewart in the 20 just gets by. And I'm not sure if maybe Bobby Labonte got booted by somebody behind him who couldn't check up in time. Right, Bobby checked up whoever was maybe behind him. Yeah, it looks did. like uh, Nemechek in the 10 car, subbing exactly for Johnny happened, Benson. Yeah. Chain reaction once again. On board from uh, Kenny Schrader's front bumper cam. Well, meanwhile, that 28 car, he's done pulled out to a little over a two-second lead. And Matt Kenseth has got back by Ward Burton still trying to get that lap back. And I don't know if they fixed the 55 car or fixed the 55 driver. But whatever it is, he's a lot better. And he's hanging around the front here and maybe try to get back on the lead lap. Oh, trouble down here. Man, hard. Frank Kimmel in the wall. Frank Kimmel just took off like something happened to the right front. 
Caution is out. Yep, seventh time in this race, lap 215. The right front destroyed. I think he must have cut a tire down because that thing I looked up and he was headed for the fence in a high, at a high rate of speed. This is one of those borderline calls. Uh, the leaders have 29 laps on their tires. They may be coming to pit road, Darrell. Let's see, we're 215 laps. You could uh, do it on one stop from yeah, here if I you had I'd, to. I think I'd come. And I believe they are coming. Here they come. Giving up track position. Here come Rudd, Ward Burton, Spencer, Jeff Green, Ryan Newman. <laughs> the, everybody on oh, the lead man. Oh, boy, Kimmel's car really took a hard lick. Stuck her shot up that hill. Saw one like that here, and oh, well, here's Dick Berger. Well, Jimmy Spencer has slid into his pit area and aligned the car absolutely perfectly for his crew. Four tires, Steve Burns. Now there are several cars out ahead of race leader Dave Blaney. They are Matt Kenseth, Bobby Hamilton, and Brett Bodine trying to get a lap back from the leader. 77, the yellow car right there. Dave Blaney's our leader. Blaney's kind of liking this leading races. You know, it gets addictive. He was out front last week. Had a shot at winning up there in California, and here he is today, boys, looking pretty good. Darrell, you said a couple of weeks ago he was having a, a little crisis of confidence. Yeah, he was. I talked to him at Talladega, and he said, man, I don't know. You know, I just I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's a car. And... I, again, Mike, you mentioned it just a second ago when we came back from break. Jimmy Spencer, look at, look at the pit stop on these guys. But this is what these guys are doing, 14.8. That's the reason it's deceiving. Yeah, he came in third, but he actually went out first. But look at his total time on pit road versus these others. I mean, everybody else, these three guys are close. But look at Spencer right there, and that's the difference. I'm telling you, when it's so hard to pass, you can win races on pit road with what you do right there and what your crew does for you. Jimmy Spencer right now is second to Blaney. He's passed Kenny Schrader. Dick Bergren. Well, Larry Mack was talking about how good Spencer's pit stop was. Let me tell you what, when he got to the end of pit road, realized where he was sequentially, he let out a war whoop, a big yahoo. And the crew is so pumped up that they are asking to have him pit often. They are just all fired up here in Spencer's pit. They think they got a shot to win the race. Rusty with trouble slowing down in the speedway. Yeah, he, he Rusty couldn't get the bike. Got the right rear down. Right rear tire flat. Kurt Busch got into the back of him, and uh, fortunately, there was no damage. Just, well, he just a bit slides, of contact yeah, after he, that happened. He slides right up in front of him because he got a right rear tire down, and he's lucky he didn't get turned around right there. He's trying to get the pit road, and oh, oh. here we go. Casey Atwood gets into Jeff Burton, and five cars are going to pile up. And Jerry that, Nadeau. That's all because Rusty he had nowhere to go. He just couldn't get down into the end of the pit lane. That 29 car is laid up against the fence hard. Now, Matt Kenseth, he'll get his lap back. Bobby Hamilton in the 55, he's going to get one of his two back. Bunch of guys are trying. Oh. Spencer, he'll lead the race here at the caution flag. Kevin Harvick, Stacy Compton, Jerry Nadeau are the victims of that pileup at turn three. And that was because Rusty could not get in. He was trying to get down out of the way. He's got a flat right rear tire. Everybody bottled up neck behind, bottlenecked up behind him and caused the crash. And Ward Burton in the 22 car, he's in the garage area. Went straight to the garage area, but in the middle of three and four, he didn't even come to pit road. The pole sitter and the best car here for most of this race has parked it. I see no damage. Hmm. Well, let's see what happened to bring out this eighth caution flag. Watch the two car of Wallace. He's just trying to get down into the, trying to go. There's an opening right there. He thinks he can get down right there, but Jeff Burton didn't know. I don't think he knew that what, what was going on with Rusty. He was going to dive to the inside, and here come the seven car. They collided, and the rest is history. And I tell you, you see that 29 car up there? That's the one that's really tore up. Yep. That was back up that was off the turn, turn two. Yeah, I was trying to tell. He's got his arm out. Yeah, I don't, gosh, I don't know what, what, what the Jeff Burton was thinking about. He gets into him off of two. Rusty's got his hand out. Maybe Jeff thought he was shaking his fist at him and uh, was yeah. going to dive in under him there. And Casey Atwood came flying in there on the low side. Right there. Yeah, he, he had a run. He doesn't know what's going on. Four car just squeezes through.
This is down the front straightaway here, going down into turn one. This is when Rusty first knows he's got a problem. Car takes off up the hill. Burton gets a run on him, and they bang together. Now, my, my thought is that Jeff Burton thinks Rusty's trying to block him maybe as they go down into this turn. He doesn't realize that Rusty has a flat tire. From Kevin Harvick, who was swept up in all this, and he is okay. In the back of his teammate, Robbie his Gordon. His teammate, that messes the front of the car up. Gets a run down the back. Here comes the 99. The force nursed Ooh. him into the outside wall, and that was it, a hard lick. Kevin Harvick's okay. The guys I feel for, and it's because I worked there for four years, the fab shop at RCR. This is three weeks in a row. This car is wrecked at Talladega two weeks ago. Four out of five cars was tore up for, for Richard Childress Racing. Kevin Harvick's all right. Here's Matt. About 8,500 into three and four into turn three, about 300 less RPMs into three than into one because the front stretch is much longer than the back stretch. A lot more RPMs, a lot more miles per hour. You see the interval two and a half seconds behind leader Jimmy Spencer. Boy, that was, that was a slick move. Did you see that? Yeah. Jeff Gordon just kind of moved Jeff Green aside right there. Tony Stewart was about to move him aside off turn two as well and then backed off of him. This is this pretty aggressive driving right here. Right up on him. Of course, Tony Stewart's right down there with him. He got him a little loose getting in there. Jeff cuts right down in front of Tony. And Tony Stewart. Well, he saw what Jeff did. He said, that was a pretty cool move. Let me try it. Meanwhile, Jeff Green is getting his, getting his dandruff up. Well, Jeff Green had a great car in the first half of this race. Let me tell you, I think if he could catch Gordon back. Oh, there's a car around down there. Kyle Petty down turn mm. two, guys. Just Caution went around on him. I couldn't tell if he got up on the outside, looked like. Lap 247, ninth yellow of this race. Kurt Busch will not get his lap back. No. We're under caution for Kyle Petty in turn two, the red car, red and black car. It's up here on the outside. Just got up out of that groove, Daryl. Nowhere to no go. No grip. Now, now, up until they sealed this racetrack, people were making great passes up on the outside like that. You could even run higher than that. You could go all the way up against the wall down there. So damage to the sprint dodge in the back, but Kyle stays on the lead lap. He radioed in and told the crew, driver error. From Rusty Wallace's car. Those right just, side tires up there where there's just no grip. When she starts to get a little twitchy like that, there's no grip, round she goes. Larry, have you ever felt like that maybe you and I spent way too much time in the garage area <laughs> when we listened to Mike and Chris? What is all this? They, they, they've watched too many movies. All I know is about race cars. All I've ever watched is the Weather Channel and <laughs> FX and Fox. I was going to get a good night's sleep last night, and I was flipping through the channel. Whoa, What's on Last American Hero? Rusty just went up the hill here. Yeah. He's got another. Something wrong with Rusty's car. Yeah, and Ricky Rudd's right on him. He's going to have to go around the outside of him, put a lap down. He's got a problem. Got He's another, got another. Oh, oh Rudd. Ricky Rudd hard into the outside wall. No. Our leader. Here comes the land rush back to the caution flag. Holy cow. Newman the leader. Hermie Sadler gets a lap back. Rusty slides up toward the wall as got the right side tires down. Rusty's got a right front tire down. He's going to tear, tear the nose off the thing, trying to get back to the pits. But, you know, I don't know what happened with Rudd. I'm not sure. It didn't look like there was any contact, although, you know, Rusty was there slow going in the corner, but but we got to take a look at this. But Ricky may have got up in that out of that in that well, sealer where there's no grip, and that may have been what happened as he was going around. Every Rusty time there. we've seen a car get a little high down there in turn one, this is what the, they get a, this kind of result. Now watch the There's 28. Rusty. Ricky goes around. Oh. Oh, yeah, he rubbed him. He rubbed him. He sure did. Four, get to the bottom now. You're clear to the bottom. Clear to the bottom. Outside. 
outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just, just brush him. Outside and outside. Just Enough brush to him. get him out of shape. Take it all. Go to the caution. Beat that car back to the caution. A hard crash at the end of the pit wall. Robbie Gordon has run into the inertia barrier and come to rest at the end of the concrete wall. And what all the water is, this is water barrels filled with water to keep from hitting the end of that pit wall. Yeah, those are water barrels, and that's concrete. The, the window net's down, so he is indicating to rescue workers he can get out. But that water barrel was designed by a great road racer, John Fitch, who raced for Cunningham at Le Mans. The first Fitch inertia safety barrier is found on highway, uh, bridge abutments all over the country, and it's also used to good effect, as it was right there here at Richmond. We got Raceway. cars. At, we got cars everywhere, Rick. 28 oh. on turn one and two, 31 down here in three and four. What a mess. I know his car is tore up, but could you imagine hitting that wall right there without those water barrels there or without that barrier? And Rusty's tire all torn up as he finally made it to pit road a lap later. Yeah, what he's got to be worried about is if, you know, if it knocks the nose off of it, it looks like he's going to make it around, okay? And once again, Rusty Wallace had a bad, uh, had a left rear down or right rear down over there, caused that big wreck. This time he's got a right front down, took the leader out. And one big problem he could encounter, we talked about it earlier, thinking that's about what happened to Bobby Hamilton is before he gets to his pit box and gets a tire on there, is rubbing that sway bar arm off. Look way up at the top of the racetrack. There you see Robbie Gordon. Whoa. There you see all the water. Yeah. It's a, you know what happened? He was probably coming around there and they told him to pit and he tried to turn down into the pit lane and was going too fast. Now from Kenny Schrader. Oh. Well, that's if, the way that if, if you turn on pit road late, if you turn on the pit road late, you, you're going to get a lot of debris on your tires. And this race uh, is going to be red flag. You're going to stop the cars to clean up at turn two and at turn four. But that's how that barrier is supposed to work, Daryl. The water is in there in several compartments separated by foam, and it's designed to disperse the energy so that car and its driver don't have to absorb it. It sure worked. See all the foam in there. And Robbie Gordon's able to walk away. Two rookies. As we said, second and third, Johnson and Newman. Every week it's this way. You know, the, we end up at the end of the day with uh, two or three rookies up there setting the pace. Three or four veterans out there chasing them. We've had a rookie finish in the top ten in almost every race this year. And they've won. Yes. I mean, you know, it's not like they're just hanging around. I mean, they win races. Oh, turn two. Sorry, Kyle Petty got caught up on the outside of Mike Skinner and Dave Blaney, and that was almost another one. Well, that makes about 40 almost then. <laughs> Only 40? <laughs> 40. I lost count. Not the 40 that I can recall. Right. Here's what happened. Yeah, right there. Trying to run three wide up off turn two. That don't work. Nope. Is it three wide or three wide? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, is that a little bump? I believe it was, and I don't think oh. that uh, Mr. Spencer is going to appreciate that. No. Now, I remember what the uh, Kurt Whoa. Bush. Oh, no, there he goes around. Oh, Kurt Bush. he's going to hit the wall. Ryan Newman takes the lead. Caution is out. Uh oh, look out, Rusty. Look, look out, Rusty. Clear low. Come on, guys. Jimmy's trying to get going to stay on the lead lap here, and that will hand the lead. I don't believe he's got much to, to get going with. No. Wadded it up pretty good. Hands the lead to the other rookie, Ryan Newman. Spence was a, got a little shove off a of two over there, and Spencer was holding him down real tight getting into three. Here we go. He gets into him, and this this is like Bristol. Remember what Kurt Busch did to, to uh, Jimmy? Gets into him a little bit. Doesn't really upset the car much. Just a little touch. Side by side, now, see how close together they are and how Jimmy's leaning on him. Even here, even here, you can pull the back end around on the car. Yeah, 
And notice how right after that little bump going into the turn, Spencer drives to the right and drives away. And it, you could already <laughs> see Jimmy Johnson's wheels turn to the right. I, I know why you're laughing. <laughs> tell, tell, <laughs> tell us. Rookie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Spencer's thinking. Right, because he knows eight wheels corner better than four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not going to let that happen. So. So Jimmy Johnson becomes the latest leader to crash out of this race. Stop off so we can try not to lose my lap. No, you're going to have to get it off, Jimmy. All the stuff here. For the most part, none of the leaders with only 11 laps on their tires. All the leaders elected to stay out with 21 cars on the lead lap. The green flag is just waved, and another rookie takes his turn at the point, Ryan Newman. Oh, yeah, we don't run out of rookies. We got plenty of them to throw at you. But he has some veterans lined up behind him. Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Spencer, and Jeff Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, all veterans behind him. Yeah, Spencer fell to fifth, and uh, Dick Bergeron. Well, I was listening to Jimmy Spencer's radio when that incident occurred, and I listened to it all the way through. In fact, I just shut it off so I could talk to you. And Spencer was remarkably calm on the radio, surprisingly calm. When asked what happened, Rusty. he said, well, he Rusty. said, big crash right. in the racetrack. Huge big on one. the back. Rusty Wallace Point crashes. Leader. Point leader. Nobody get left back. All this started because the 11 car got and Jimmy Spencer got together. They cleared it, and then all this happened behind him. I was looking dead at it. I don't think Sterling is torn up. I think he just slid in there and stopped with a little bit of damage, but not much. Yeah, Brett Bodine, Mark Martin, and Jimmy Spencer were all kind of tangled up there bumper to bumper. Yikes. That's the third time Rusty's been. He finally got Rusty this time. He was actually the first car to get out of shape and spin. Here's Steve Park, the one. Terry Labonte, the five car. Rick Mast, the 90 car. Pickles, cornflakes, and Pennzoil. That's not a good combination. No, they got mayonnaise in there, too, so yeah. it's. You got cornflakes, motor oil, and mayonnaise. Right here, Jimmy Spencer in the 41, Brett Bodine in 11. Right here, he, Jimmy had to check up because yeah. of Mark Martin Mark in the Martin. six. Brett Bodine gets into his left rear quarter panel. They that checked broke, up a little bit. Yeah. Rusty spins, and then this is what happens. Yeah, that broke uh, Rusty's momentum. I'd write down the cars involved, but there aren't many that weren't. That might be an easier task. See Jeff Green, Kevin Harvick from above. For Ricky Craven in the 32, Jeremy Mayfield in 19, those guys just barely getting through all those lead lap cars. Darrell, that track narrows up in a hurry when one car gets sideways, let alone two. Well, and it's slick. I mean, the sucker's slick, and you got, you know, you just don't have a lot of control. He just tried to gas it and get it to turn all the way around, and he did, made it worse, kind of like Dale Jr.'s deal. John Andretti, Hutt Strickland, Kenny Schrader. Point leader on pit road. I think his, I don't think Sterling's car is hurt anywhere. Got a little damage to the rear, but not much. 55 got a lap back, and I want you to look at it now. He lost oh. his left rear tire. He got. He just got back on the lead lap. There's his tire right there. What in the world? Matt? Bobby Hamilton's the one I feel sorry for. He got that lap back on that last caution, came in the pits, and I guess they left with the lug nuts not tight on the left rear, and his wheel came off. And I'm not going to sing the song. I mean, that's old news. Yeah. yeah. He's in 24th a lap down. But you know the song I'm thinking of. You picked a fine time to leave me loose wheel. That was a big hit for me. Yes, it was. Yeah. That and don't take you. What was that other, what's the name of that song? Kenny Rogers song. Oh, Ruby. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh trouble oh. turn to Kenny Schrader and Mike Skinner. And Skinner was having a pretty good go of it. Yeah, he was. And caution is out on the speedway here. About 35 laps to go. Caution number 13. One inside of you there, the 88. Now you're clear. Get that in, car was pretty undamaged. I tell you, I don't know where Skinner's going, but it's I keep a camera on him. We got. He don't look happy. A radiator. 
Got the radiator. And if the thing don't lay down on him before he gets up there to Kenny Schrader, he may be uh, going up to let Kenny know just how unhappy he is. Well, Schrader went in the corner outside of Blaney. And uh, Skinner was up outside of Schrader. There's just nothing, you know, when you get up out of the groove down there in the first turn, you go around. That's just kind of the way it's been all day. You know, Daryl, I'm glad I'm up here in the broadcast booth. These leaders, they have 32 laps on their tires. There's going to be about 30 laps to go. But what I'm seeing, though, with the lap times, I'm not sure sure the best place to be is out front on those 30 lap tires. I ain't coming in. Okay, you're okay. staying out. And it looks like that's what the leaders are going to do, stay out. Mike Jimmy Skinner. Spencer comes in he, in the 41 car. He has to because he's been falling back, Larry. Yeah, he was three tenths of a yeah, second. His lap, a lap off, off the leader. He's been falling back, so it makes sense for him to come in. Ricky Craven pits so along with Kenny Schrader and Jeff Green. All of these are lead lap cars still. Uh, Mike Skinner has gone to the garage. Newman is closing right back up on Stewart. Oh, I don't think it did. Tony can't give up on the. He can't think that he's not going to hear from Ryan Newman one more time. I think Ryan's going to get up there with about 10 to go and see what he's got. Burton now third, Mark Martin fourth, then Gordon, Mayfield, Kenseth, Grissom, Bush, and Strickland. Pretty intense back in here for his eighth, ninth, tenth, long in there. Everybody's bunched up, fifth on back. Guys are uh, on the lead lap. Oh, Bush against the wall. He and Strickland get together in the back straightaway. And Kurt Bush in trouble in turn three. I believe he's got a, a tire down. Uh, no caution, though. No caution. Right front. He's been up against that wall, I'm telling you, so many times today. Oh, car's coming. Car's coming. He's another one of those that's on a backup car. Like Dale Jarrett now. was. Easy, easy. He's already Slow used down. this one up about three times. Freer, left rear, left side. Looks like the right sides are down too on that car. Yep. He's trying to make it to the pits. I think he's going to be out. Of, I think he's going to sit out on the frame. Come to you, Jimmy. Which is really going to hurt him coming in here second in the points. Short tracks are hard on these rookies. Here, five away, right here. Good grief. Left rear down. A Look roll at all on the right front. On the back straightaway. I just don't believe. I don't think they'll throw a caution though, Daryl. It's down the bottom of the racetrack. Normally you don't see cars down there. 10 to go next time by.